Right. So I'll just be starting off with the webcasts. Uh, today we'll be dealing with notifiers and queues, which are used for synchronization. Uh, my name is Divya Mahankali, and I'm an applications engineer with National Instruments. So have any of you ever felt the need for synchronization? I'm sure a lot of you that uh, you are not able to do it at the right time. So in this case, So I'm just putting up the poll right now. I can see a lot of you are. Uh, I can see that a lot of you have used synchronization between trying to ensure that the uh, data is read from in the uh, slave loop at the same rate that the data is writing into in the master chain. So between parallel processes, and, and I'm sure that many of you have used uh, local variables and local variables string data. But uh, the disadvantages of local variables is that uh, it breaks LabVIEW data flow uh, paradigm and it allows for race constraints. And also, if you uh, write uh, faster than you read, then there's a chance that you're losing the data as such. So there's a, there's a need for a better method of synchronization. In this case, we can use something called as Notifier. A uh, Notifier is just a tool for communicating between two independent parts of a block diagram or between two VIs running on the same machine. So a Notifier cannot communicate between uh, across networks or across a VI server, but can only do it within uh, different parts in the same block diagram as such or between two different VIs. And uh, it's very similar to mailboxes. So for example, if you post a letter in a particular mailbox, then another process receives the data from the mailbox. Uh, in this way, you can say that they are similar to local. The process that is waiting for the information must cycle continuously. Therefore, while you're using notifiers, you do not need to poll continuously because it simply waits uh, for the process that is available and starts again only when the new data is available. So this cuts down the computer time wasted on endless polling. Now you can see the various something called as an obtain notifier, which obtains a notifier reference and and send notification is used to uh, transmit the data, used to receive the data in a slave loop. It's a notifier, thus that you're releasing the resource. If you cannot, please uh, Type, type in the answer on in master slave uh, pattern, design pattern where uh, 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 here in the master uh, loop uh, a notifier is created and is obtained a resource for it is created. You're writing the data into the notifier and in this uh, particular case structure and you're releasing it. And the slave uh, waits for uh, the data to be written in to uh, arrive at it. And once the data has arrived, it can do some processing. And uh, uh, it, there is an error which is generated if there is no data in the notifier resource, which causes the slave loop to stop. stop slave design pattern using notifiers from scratch and we can see how it's done.
are available. You can see modifiers are available in the synchronization tab. So the first thing that I'm going to do is into it. So this obtains modification function. Send notification. Release notification release. This is the resource. waits for the data to be transmitted. I am creating a master slave loop in, in which I am writing and reading the data. Now you can see here there is a particular uh, function called as element data type. So notifier can accept a data type of any, uh, can accept any particular data type. So for an example purpose I am going to transmit a boolean data type and a numeric data type. Uh, I'm creating two charts so that you can see the difference between uh, the data when which is transmitted and which is received by the notifier. So over here, I'll just be writing the random number generated data uh, to to the waveform chart as well as the notifier. Now it's very important that the resource is released at the end of notification as uh, they made unexpected errors if the resource is not released. Now let's just see uh, how the, there's a difference between the two loops. Now assume that I'm putting a weight on in this particular loop uh, for about a period of 500 milliseconds. Now you can see that both loops are completely synchronized and there's no lag between the data as such. This is because the slave loop uh, is running, uh, even though the slave loop is running as fast as possible, it's still waiting for the data to reach the notifier and then only will the loop get executed. So over here, uh, I, uh, this is the master loop that I have, that which I've just created, where I'm uh, creating an, a notification resource. I'm writing data into the notifier and I'm releasing the notifier and this is a slave loop in which I'm just obtaining the data from the notifier and displaying it. 
So in this particular master loop, there is a timing of this loop executes every 500 milliseconds, while uh, this slave loop executes as fast as possible. But you are not seeing any uh, difference in the display in the charts because uh, this slave loop stops execution until the data is available in the master loop. So there is no uh, data displayed in the waveform chart until there is a new data available in the master loop. So uh, a notifier just enqueues one data element at each time. Moving on, we can see the benefits of the notifiers are there is synchronization of the slave and master loop and the data is globally available throughout in the entire VI. And uh, the using of notifiers creates an efficient code, uh, especially because you don't need to use local variables and there's uh, no need, there's uh, no race conditions which are created, which is a disadvantage of local variables. But the disadvantage is that if you are writing more than one data point at a time into a notifier, then this particular data can be overwritten or lost because notifiers transmit only one data point at a time. So if more than uh, one data point is transmitted by the time it is read by the wait on notification, this data can be overwritten or lost. Uh, there is no buffering of data as such. And uh, this is an advantage of notifiers. This disadvantage can be overcome by the usage of queues. So queues are very similar to notifiers, except that queues can store multiple pieces of data. By default, queues work in first in, first out manner, and uh, you can the queue can be used for any put any uh, data type, and there's uh, no specific data type for which queues can only be used for. Uh, you can use queues when you want to process all data placed in the queue. So, but processing of data cannot be done with the queue itself. The uh, all the all the elements in the data elements in the queue has to first be dequeued, and then only can it be proce processed. Uh, whereas notifiers can be only used if only if you want to process the current data. So a queue is very useful in uh, producer-consumer loop situations where one portion of the code is creating the data and the other portion of the code is uh, consuming the data. The advantage of using a queue is that uh, the producer and consumer rates don't have to be identical. If the consumption is slower than the production, the queue will become full and the producer queue will be forced to wait until the consumer queue has dequeued the elements in the queue before a new element uh, can be written in. So these are all the queue elements, uh, the queue functions that are operation functions that are there. Uh, again, once again, very similar to how a notifier uh, uh, functions are. Uh, first, you have to obtain a queue reference. Then you have to enqueue the uh, queue element. Uh, you can uh, then release the queue in the uh, producer loop. And in the consumer loop, you can dequeue the element and flush the queue. So I'll be showing you an example of a simple queue, which is inbuilt in ships with lab queue. So this is a simple queue example that's uh, that's there in lab view. where there are two main loops. One is the producer loop and another is the consumer loop. So you can see over here there are two uh, obtained queue references, uh, one of which is collected to a Boolean uh, data type and the other to a numeric data type. So uh, a queue condition is created for a Boolean and for a numeric data type. Uh, the elements are enqueued uh, in the master loop and uh, once all the elements are enqueued in the loop, uh, the queue status is released, so the resource is released for it in the master element. And simultaneously, uh, the elements are dequeued in the slave loop or the consumer loop. And, uh, and you can see the data displayed over here. Now you can see over here again that uh, the, mas the producer loop produces the data much slower than the consumer loop because there's a timing function. Let me just run this particular VI. 
you can see that there is no loss in data in the queue. The data generated by loop 1 is passed on to loop 2 directly and the stop is also monitored. There is no lag between the data uh, in loop 1 and in loop 2. Now, a lot of you will have questions on uh, what's the difference between uh, now again, uh, let's have just have a look at producer consumer design pattern in queues. Uh, once again, let me reiterate that a uh, queue can accept data of any type and in the producer loop, the uh, data is enqueued and in the consumer loop, the data is dequeued where the processing is done. Now, queues are not like arrays in which processing can be done directly on the queue reference. For example, at this point, if you try to put any processing, uh, you will get an error. But uh, once the data is dequeued, then the processing of data can be done. So a lot of you will have questions on what's the difference between queues and notifiers. So let me just uh, show a demonstration on the same. So here I have four loops in which one is a primary loop where I'm generating the data, a sine wave, uh, and I have uh, three uh, loops each containing a different, uh, a different function, one a variable, another a notifier, and another a queue. So uh, we can see, we just, just run this via and see how the data is flowing. So you can see that if the, if the time then the time loop time is the same in all three loops. If uh, in a local variable loop, if the loop time is same, there is no lag in data. But if I decrease the loop time, then you can see that a lot of data is lost. And in if in notifiers also, if I decrease the loop time, again the same condition happens. You can see that the data is lost because there's no buffering of data in notifiers. While as in queues, if I decrease the loop time, you can see that the uh, uh, that the secondary loop the in, in the queues, the data is exactly the same as how the primary loop is. And the elements in queue are just increasing. So if I run the notifiers twice as fast as the uh, primary loop, you can see that the uh, notifiers execute as soon as the data is available. So the primary loop and the notifiers are exactly the same. Now if I increase the loop time to two times as primary in the queues, the elements in the uh, queue uh, decrease and once it reaches zero, uh, it, uh, it resumes the same uh, time as the primary loop. So uh, the queue loop executes as fast as the primary loop is executing. As long as there's data in the queue, it, the consumer loop executes. Now let's just have a look at the block diagram to see what's exactly happening. So this is the primary loop in which I'm generating the data. Uh, there's a sine wave generated in this particular function. And I'm uh, sending the data to the, both the notifier and the queue and the local variable. So uh, in the notifier loop, it just waits for notification. And uh, as we have seen in the uh, front panel, uh, when uh, the loop is uh, twice as fast as the primary loop, the notifier loop is twice as fast as the primary loop, there is no lag in data. But when it's slower than the, not uh, than the primary loop, then there will be a lag in data. And in queue, uh, because there's buffering, there is no loss of data at all. Well, whereas in local variable, there's a loss of data either way.
So, uh, which of these, uh, which of these uh, notifiers or cues is most apt for your application? So I can see that a lot of you have said that uh, queues are very apt for your application. So the advantage of queues is that it buffers data while not notifiers transmit data uh, as and when it's available. It transmits only one point at a time. So the contest of the week is now live at LabVIEW Enabled, the NI India online community. Uh, please click on the link which you have received in the chat window to view about the contest. So the contest is uh, to simulate a multi-core computer using queues. Uh, here you have to use a single producer queue and a multiple consumers in which you are trying to process a sine wave data. So here you'll be simulating how a multi-core computer processes sine wave data. Uh, the link to the contest has been put on your chat window. You can extend your uh, webcast Wednesday learning uh, experience by going to you can uh, extend your webcast Wednesday learning experience by uh, going to ni.com and uh, uh, browsing our white papers. Uh, also, you can watch uh, our other live. Uh, you can watch the previous episodes of Webcast Wednesday and get your queries from the session and LabVIEW resolved. Uh, and uh, if you attend 20 sessions, you can free, win a free uh, CLAD attempt. Uh, do you guys have any questions? 